Hi all, this is Skate, and this is the ARL V39, which is the tier 6 French tank destroyer. And so far in every French tank destroyer video I have done, I think I have expressed that this line is very, very odd. Got a couple of very bad tanks, followed by a fantastic S35CA, and then obviously the S35CA is followed by the ARL V39 at tier 6. And so what do I think of this tank, now I've played it properly on the live server? Well, it's not a great tank, but I do like it. The top 105mm packs a very healthy 310 alpha and 165mm penetration, which in terms of DPM puts it above average. It's not as good as the Flat Panzer or the Nash Horn or the Churchill Gun Carrier in terms of DPM, but it beats most of the other tank destroyers. In terms of armor, well, do you recognize this thing? Uh, the BDR, the tier five French heavy tank, it has pretty much the same hull. And both these tanks have the same amount of armor. It has 60 mil of armor on the front and 40 on the sides and 60 then on the rear. The major difference being is the BDR has a turret, which means you can take advantage of that armor a little more i.e. do some side scraping. It's a lot harder to side scrape this and it's a tier higher. So you've got bigger guns firing at you. So you can try and angle the armor and it will produce bounces on the side but it's not really up to a lot and you can't rely on it really. But we'll quickly run through the garage and then straight into some gameplay. So I run exactly the same on this as the previous multi-purpose restoration pack, adrenaline and the repair kit. On a provisions front, I will run the canned pate, hot coffee, and improved fuel. And then onto an ammunition front, I will run 58 AP, 14 APCR, and 8 HE. Now the HE on this is actually pretty good and reliable. And you won't need 14 APCR, but it's worth putting in just because, well, you can store it. In terms of upgrades, I personally would recommend going for this 105 gun as soon as possible, then going for the engine, then going for the tracks. That's the way I did it anyway. And in terms of equipment, I have been running just a gun rammer. I'll fix through the options of what I would put on if you're going to keep this tank, but for me, however much I've enjoyed playing the tank, well, especially in comparison to the lower tier ones, it's not a keeper for me. I'm probably going to keep it up to 100 battles and then sell it. So I'm not putting any of my spare parts on this tank. But all the replays you see obviously will be featuring just a rammer on the tank, no other equipment, and it's not at 100% crew in these replays either. So take that into consideration in terms of how the tank performs. Now, gameplay-wise, for me... It is a frustrating tank, but it's still a fun tank at the same time, especially with that alpha. And what I like to do, because it has very, very good mobility, is not go directly into the line of fire of the reds. As you will see, what I'm doing now is rather than taking the heavy path down the right-hand side, I'm popping out on the left to see if I can spot anything first. Once I've done this, I want to try and get on the flank of any heavies etc which potentially are going to come down that path. Looking at the team lineup they are mostly mediums which in theory means I should come across one or two heavies and potentially a Nash one. Hopefully not the medium tanks which haven't been seen yet. Um, as luck would have it though, <laughs> here come the medium tanks. But this I think is the most important part about this tank. Whenever I'm trying to shoot at something I'll try and do it on a corner if you're doing it on a corner, you can pop around, you can shoot, and then you can get straight back into cover. Because you're just not going to reliably bounce anything. A um, little bit different by here, though. I want that Nash Horn. And you'll notice I've loaded my HE. And we're going to do well over 400 damage to him quite easily. And then we're just going to drive around him. Because, well, he can't turn as quickly as us. He is going to get finished off by the friendly Churchill though, and I can see the Anko is on very, very low health, so I have left my HE open, and I'm hoping to just go around the corner and shoot him in the face before I get one 
in return off him, but he is facing the other way, so bonus. Now, here's an interesting one for you. HE below the side armor above the track. 400 damage. For a tier 6 tank with well, just over 8 second reload, we did nearly 900 damage in those two shots. That's very respectable. So it may not have armor. In fact, it has no armor. So what I try to do is things like that. Um, park it into a building as if you're side scraping and hope you're at quite aggressive angle that they bounce off the side of the tank. It's not reliable though with only 40 mil of side armor. Like I said, a tier 5, it works great. But when you're up in tier 6, you got much higher pen guns firing at you. The way I try to play this is quite aggressively actually. I don't play it on the back line. But pop it near a building. So you're on a corner always. You come around the building, shoot and back up as quick as possible. It has 14 degrees of gun arc by the way. That's 7 to the left and 7 to the right. So it's not the greatest, but that's very workable. On top of that, it has an okay 6 degrees of gun depression. What's the most frustrating thing about this tank? Look where he is aiming. Straight into the big commander's hatch on the top. Because with this tank, there is... There's another HE shot, by the way. Um, but with this tank, there's, there's no point in trying to aim at potentially getting a bounce on the armor when you can just shoot the big machine gun port or commander's hatch on top. I'll come back to that point in a minute though, because I think it's very important to discuss that a little bit more. Um, quick look at the results first, we did 2840 damage, and we got ourselves a first class. We made 36,000 credits nearly, now that's pretty good for a non-premium tank, but that's obviously down to the fact that we were firing HE so often. But yeah, back to that hatch on top. When I reviewed this line on the test server, my instant reaction was looking at all the way up the line. What does it matter what armor these tanks have when everyone's just going to be shooting at that on top? It turns out I kind of overestimated, I don't know, the vast population of the server. <laughs> now, most people who watch this video or watch Blitz videos tend to know what they're doing. So from that perspective, it kind of doesn't apply to you guys, I imagine. But so many people just shoot the front of these tanks. Not just this tank, because it doesn't matter where you shoot this tank, there's a probability it's going to pen. But the Fosh, and the Fosh 155 at tier 9 and 10, that's different. They have huge big weak spots on top of them. Yet half the people I've come up against when I've trialed these counts on, well, trial these tanks on the live server, they don't shoot for the weak spot, and it's not a subtle weak spot. It's a giant weak spot, but people, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people actually just aim for the front of the tank and bounce, rather than just taking the time to aim a good shot into that top. Now this makes all the difference, because I thought these tanks would be really, really bad at higher tiers. It turns out, because of that, and because not many people aim for that top weak spot, they're pretty good, and that's kind of frustrating, because from my perspective, when I see one, I'm instantly going to try and aim for the weak spots, or if I'm in something with very, very high gun, pen, let's try again, if I'm in something with a very, very high penetration gun, like a grill, E4, anything like that, Death Star, I'm just going to aim for the front of the tank and pretty much guarantee a pen anyway, but if you're in a medium tank or you're in a heavy tank, you're not going to pen reliably. Yet, for some reason, medium tanks and a lot of heavy tanks still just fire at the front rather than aiming at the weak spot. So, where I made a, a preview of the tanks saying I don't think they're going to be very good, they are better than I expected them to be because people aren't aiming for that weak spot. And that being said as well, though, when you do come across a competent player who knows exactly what they're doing, they will aim for the weak spot, and they can take you out very effectively and very quickly. So yeah, when I made my preview before they hit the live server, I just assumed everybody would aim for the weak spot because it's so glaringly obvious on top of the tank, but turns out not. So they're better for that reason. Um, now in terms of this tank, 
all this matters because that big giant weak spot on the top of the tank. You'll notice I've avoided going up and down dunes in all the replays, even the next one when we have dunes. I will avoid at all costs going up and down the dune because of that giant weak spot on top. The gun is mounted very, very low on this tank, which means by the time you go up a ridge, your weak spot on top and the top of the tank is coming up before your gun, which means they're going to get plenty of shots off on you before you even get your gun over and get a shot on them. And here is a perfect example of it. You'll see I'm reversing back and turning left because my big giant machine gun port or commander's hatch on top of the tank is still visible. And thanks to this M4 for parking right in front and blocking my shot. Now, in any other circumstance, I wouldn't do that, but I wanted to push down to get down here and get the last bits of damage in I could because he is the last tank and there are four of us left which does mean I get one more shot in before he does die. But yeah, that drives me wild when people just park their tank right in front of yours. End result with that game though, is we walked away with 2,932 damage. We have a first class badge and we made 35,000 credits again. Onto the last replay, you'll see we are on a map with sand dunes. But I'm going to make a point of not going over the sand dune directly with something on the other side. Because as I mentioned, you've got all that tank above the height of your gun, which they will be able to shoot first. Instead, go around the sand dunes. Poke your gun out, shoot, and get straight back into cover. Obviously in this circumstance, we're not spotted, nothing's been spotted, so I can go up high and have a look what's going on, see if we can spot anything. But so many times when I first bought this tank, I went up over a dune and realised that so much of my tank is exposed. That's why I can't emphasise enough to try and keep hard cover on your left and on your right so you can duck back down between shots and keep cover there because there is nothing in terms of armour which is going to protect you. Now, again, you'll see we've got a HE shot on the go here because, as I mentioned already, the HE is very reliable and it does pack a nasty punch. And surprisingly to a lot of tier 5s and a fair amount of tier 6s. And even some tier 7s. Because there's a lot of lightly armoured tanks. And with a fairly acceptable amount of penetration on this thing. Um, and oh, check out where the hell did that... <laughs> I can't believe that shot missed. But yeah, the HE is definitely worth packing and keeping in your tank. Purely because there's scenarios like that where you can shave off the vast majority of his health and you can easily two shot him then as a result. Now I haven't mentioned much in terms of mobility however you can see the top speed and the pickup on this tank is very very good. It only has 19 degrees of track traverse which isn't the greatest but it's still better than most tier 6 tank destroyers except for a few. But the mobility in a straight line is very good which means you can get around the battlefield thankfully. And that's exactly how I've played this tank. And it's worked perfectly for me. I've got a good win rate in this tank. And I have a good average damage. So it may sound like a stupid thing to just say, keep hard cover on your left and right. But it works. And it works very, very well. Because once you've put your shot into somebody, they're going to aim for targets which are clearly out in broad daylight rather than you. Because you're back in cover. So you're avoiding being shot at. Now here we are in a 6 on 1 situation, or 6 on 2 situation. And I've got full health, so I don't care in the slightest if I get shot. I'm just going to go get as much damage in as I can against these last two tanks. All in all, I have enjoyed playing this tank. And I'm going to continue playing it up to 100 battles. But I'm probably not going to keep it after that, because there are so many other better tanks at tier 6 you could play. But that doesn't mean this isn't an enjoyable tank to play. It's tenfold better than the lower tiers, but it's not as good as the uh, Bastub. But that one, we did 2,700 damage, we made 37,000 credits, and we are top of the board in terms of damage. 
Now we did less damage in this one than we did in the priors, but we've got more killed, which obviously contributes towards the XP. And using the mobility, we played it quite aggressively. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. The next tank in the line is bloody awful, I think. But I'll try and get a video done on that as soon as I can. Um, thank you all for watching, guys, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.